it's Monday, and the next City Skylines 2 developer diary and feature highlight video have dropped, this time covering Citizen Simulation and Life Path. And this diary confirms that the citizens in your city are going to be much more complex and individualized than they were in City Skylines. The TLDR version, every citizen will make their own choices that impact the simulation. Every citizen has their own life path, which users are able to follow along with. Every citizen will have their own individual happiness based upon their well-being and health both of which will be influenced by service coverage. Citizens with a low well-being can become criminals and negatively impact the well-being of other citizens. Citizens can be afflicted with seven different status conditions. And Chirper is back and is more useful, giving hints about city services that could use improvement. But there's a ton more to each of these topics, so in today's video, we'll deep dive into the developer diary, then we'll go over the feature highlight video and see what secrets we can decode, and I'll let you know my thoughts along the way. So let's begin with an overview of the developer diary. Like its predecessor, City Skylines 2 is an agent-based game in which every citizen is individually simulated. This means that every citizen will have a home and will travel to a variety of destinations including work, school, leisure activities, or even rarer activities like medical services, or committing crimes or even fleeing from those crime scenes. These choices will have an impact on your city's traffic patterns and a small impact on your regional economy. And on a more novel level, citizens are now randomly assigned pets that are purely cosmetic but add a little bit of visual interest to your city. Next, the diary discusses happiness. Happiness is the overall satisfaction a citizen has with their life and a combination of their well-being and health. Citizen well-being is their mental state and sense of safety. There are a number of factors that influence a citizen's well-being, including water, power, and sewage treatment availability. All forms of pollution including air, ground, noise, and garbage piling up. City service coverage, which includes the passive boost due to service proximity. Crime probability, well-functioning communication services, including post office and the internet, adequately sized housing that matches household needs, and options for shopping for goods. The new happiness info view can help you troubleshoot issues which are making your citizens unhappy and highlight areas that could be improved. Citizen health, on the other hand, is impacted by healthcare availability, proximity to medical facilities, pollution, and utility availability. Deficiencies in any of these areas may lead to an increased chance of a citizen becoming sick. However, even if all these needs are met, citizens have a low probability of becoming sick and may also need medical treatment if they are injured in a traffic crash. Further, if citizens are sick or injured, they have a chance of dying, which is increased if they already have low overall health. Similar to city skylines, information about healthcare can be found in the healthcare and death care info view. Meeting both well-being and healthcare needs will result in your citizens having a high happiness level, which will increase their overall efficiency at work. To me, this is a fairly straightforward way of handling happiness and is much clearer than the system from City Skylines 1. That system simply provided happiness by zoning category with little context. So in my opinion, this is a huge improvement. Next, the diary dives into age groups. There are four different age categories in City Skylines 2, including children, teens, adult, and seniors. Citizens from each of these age categories can form households, some of which will be multi-generational. The age of a citizen impacts their health and transportation preferences. For example, younger citizens citizens receive a health boost, while older citizens' health slowly decreases over time. Age also determines the types of activities they choose to do on a day-to-day -day basis and the mode of transportation in which they take to get there. This concept was explored much more deeply in the Traffic AI Developer Diary, which came out in late June. A link to my breakdown can be found above. Next, the diary goes over Citizen Life Path and Chirper. Every citizen now has their own life path, which is detailed in their life path journal. The journal includes everything from their name, their home address, occupation, happiness level, and their chirper feed. So I guess you could say it's pretty invasive. <laughs> The Chirper feed is the place where citizens go to voice their displeasure and pleasure with certain aspects of your city. New for City Skylines too, posts are liked to indicate how important a particular issue is to the rest of the city. Other posts will simply be about life events, such as moving, relationships, finding a new job, etc. These are cataloged within the Life Path Journal. Finally, you can follow individual citizens throughout their life if you'd like to do so. The added complexity of the Citizen Life Path makes me wonder if there'll be a connection between City Skylines 2 and the upcoming Life by You, which appears to be Paradox's answer to The Sims. Maxis did something similar back in the day with The Sims 2 and SimCity 4. The diary then covers education and employment, both of which were fully covered in the City Services Developer Diary. A link to my breakdown can be found above. Next, we learn about criminal behavior. All citizens have a chance of becoming a criminal, however, this chance is increased if a citizen has a low well-being. If a citizen becomes a criminal, they will commit crimes to earn an income. They will target random buildings that have the highest crime probability, leading to a temporary loss of well-being for the citizens that live in those buildings. They will then commit a crime which takes some time and then try to flee the scene. Police will be dispatched to the scene and arrest the criminal if they can catch up with them. If they are not caught, they will continue to commit crimes throughout the city. If they are caught, they will be arrested and taken to jail at the police station. 
From there, some criminals will serve time in prison while others will be sent back into the community. Regardless of where they serve their time, criminals that have been arrested will be rehabilitated and will become regular citizens after being released. In my opinion, this is a really interesting game mechanic, though there are a number of variables which I fear could make this a bit confusing. I also think it's a bit of a missed opportunity not to address recidivism, especially considering we now have a life path and the ability to track individual citizens for their entire lives. Next, the diary discusses leisure and tourism. Both leisure and tourism were heavily discussed and covered within the City Services Developer Diary. However, we do have a confirmation of a few new things. Citizens will pay to improve their leisure status. This presumably impacts their ability to upgrade their homes. We now know that citizens may travel to outside connections to meet their leisure needs, becoming tourists in the other city. They will leave your city entirely for a few days as a result. And finally, weather impacts tourist behavior in picking leisure opportunities, the same as it does for citizens. This means that warm, sunny weather will make outdoor activities more desirable, while cold, rainy, and snowy weather can cause a tourist and citizen alike to choose indoor activities. For a more comprehensive look at this topic, check out the City Services Developer Diary, which is linked above. And finally, and most importantly, the diary covers citizen conditions. Citizens can now be afflicted with seven status conditions. There is no direct way to remove a condition. However, having adequate city services can help resolve the condition and investigating the condition can help determine the underlying cause for it in the first place. These conditions include sick, in which a citizen is unable to work and is at an increased risk for death. Medical treatment is required to recover from this condition. Injured, in which citizens are involved in crashes, building fires and collapses, or natural disasters. Medical treatment is required to recover from this as well. Homeless, in which a citizen cannot afford to pay its rent, suitable housing is not available, and they cannot afford to move out of your city. They will live in parks until suitable housing is available for them. Unwell, in which a citizen has low well-being. Their happiness will be decreased, their efficiency at work will be negatively impacted, and they will have an increased risk of becoming a criminal. The Welfare Office can help resolve this status. Weak, which occurs when a citizen has a low health value. This decreases their happiness, it decreases their efficiency at work, it increases their chance of becoming sick. Further, if they become sick, they are at an increased risk of dying. Distressed, which occurs when citizens are in danger or trapped. This can happen when they are in a burning or collapsed building. And finally, evacuated, which occurs when a citizen is in an emergency shelter. And I really love that we have status conditions. It gives citizens more depth and provides a bit more insight into what may be causing problems within your city. And before we move on to my final thoughts, let's take a look at the feature highlight video to see what we can decode. So we'll start out here about 13 seconds into the video, and I'm gonna point out the super obvious thing. We've got a bunch of character models that are not yet complete, and they're easy to find. It's these little children that are bald and completely yoked. They can't put their arms down, they're that buff. So whenever you see those, they're not complete yet. But that's not a big deal because it's super obvious to see what they look like when they are complete. Like this gentleman right here. He's got a nice beard, he's got a nice hairstyle, wearing a warm and fuzzy jacket, pants with pleats. I mean, so much detail, it's really outstanding. The other thing that you can notice when you look at these completed models is that there's quite a bit of diversity in them in terms of their weight and height, the clothing styles. The one thing that there's not a ton of is ethnic diversity, but in some of the later shots in this trailer, there is more. So I do think it's going to be present, which is really great because it took a long time in city skylines. The other thing that I noticed here is that there are some pretty low quality textures in certain areas, such as right here. The grass texture is pretty rough, the bark on the tree. So those are things that I'm going to be looking for to see if they are improved. Because you do see like this tree right here looks really high quality relative to some of this other stuff. So I'm think guessing that things are just still being optimized. And do you see this guy? I'm pretty sure that this guy's naked. <laughs> so that's pretty funny. I'm going to try not to poke fun of things like that too much because there's a lot of them in this one. But this guy's naked and someone's got to point it out. This is probably a weird shot to stop on, but I just want to point out the level of detail again in these character models when they are complete. There are two ladies walking right here, and you can see this one right here. I mean, you can see the stitching in the jacket. That's pretty outstanding. For this one right here, you can see the stitching in the jacket right here, plus that it's a leather jacket, and you can see the texturing of the leather. That is wow. <laughs> it, it just shows that when things are complete, what they look like, and it's kind of just next level. That's really outstanding. Also, look at this this on her dress you can see that it is a looks like it's maybe a cotton dress you can almost see the weaving of the fabric wow now i talked about diversity in character models in terms of height and weight and even some ethnic diversity you're starting to see more of it as we progress through the video but one thing that we haven't seen is a lot of age diversity and I'm wondering if this is an elderly person or will be an elderly person in the future. Right now, it kind of looks like that Hello Fellow Kids meme. 
And it's gonna be interesting to see if those models progress over time, because uh, what we're seeing is that you can follow someone through their entire life. So presumably you could see them as a child and watch them age, which is gonna be a really fascinating thing to follow along with. And kind of another testament to how detailed these models almost have to be if you're gonna show that kind of progression. I we get this shot of a bus stop and a couple of things jump out to me. Obviously we've got a number of the yoke children again, that's totally fine. But I'm really curious, everyone's wearing very different clothing. So I'm wondering how this is gonna be accounted for. This person, it looks like they are going out into some fall weather, winter weather perhaps with that, that hat on. And then we've got this lady right here who's wearing a tank top. So that is definitely some differences in their perception anyway of what it's like outside. So I'm sure that that'll be resolved or I hope that that is, uh, that's something I'm gonna be very curious about. You know, and after just a couple of minutes of watching this, I'm starting to realize Leisure Suit Philip is missing and I'm disappointed. I really loved the gold shirt and I hope it makes a comeback. I hope it's a thing in the game. Even if it's just for memes every now and then, I just, I just need to see it. All that said, there's a lot of more complete character models in this. And you're starting to see that the characters all look very different, which is really, really neat to see. The other thing I'm noticing is that there are characters kind of just hanging out randomly and people walking past them. Now that is something that you didn't really have in City Skylines. And I'm very curious to know how that's gonna work. Is this a bug or is this actually what's going to happen? Because that does happen. People mill around in areas where maybe there's a pedestrian thoroughfare. So I'm very, very, very happy to see that if that is a thing in the game. The other thing, again, we have the, the high and low quality textures, really high quality texture here, really low quality texture here, but look at this grass texture. This looks really, really good. So it, it kind of shows that they're in the middle of optimizing some of these textures, or at least that's my read of this. I also really, really love that for hair color, you're seeing a lot. So it's not just normal, natural hair colors. You're also seeing some eccentric hairstyles and that's good to see. People are all different and that's awesome. That's what makes, in my opinion, that's what makes the world a really interesting place. Oh, and look at this. It's just a meeting between Vincent Vega and Heisenberg. And they're enjoying the Northern Lights together. I totally get that. I would totally sit next to them. The lights though, there's a lot of blooming here. I'm guessing this will be resolved, but that's something that I'm gonna keep an eye out for because that is pretty rough. And you can kind of see as you go forward, it kind of flickers at you. And that is something that was in City Skylines. So I am really hoping that that is something that they can resolve for this version of the game. The dev diary mentions that people will have cosmetic pets. They don't actually improve their happiness or anything like that. They just add to a bit of visual diversity in the game. Really happy to see that. I am very curious as to how many different dog models there will be. And I'm also curious if we're gonna see cats. I always, th I mean, I thought that was super weird when they added cats to City's Skyline. So I'm really hoping we just see dogs because I guess I don't really see many cat walkers where I live, but maybe, maybe in other places it's much more common, but I do love seeing the dogs. To me, that makes a lot of sense. I live in an area where it seems like everyone has a dog. I have a dog, this is my dog, Banjo. And uh, I just, I would love to see uh, a little bit more diversity with that and I hope that there are no cats. I'm also not a cat person. Sorry cat fans. One bit of disappointment from this shot. These curbs are really, really tall. These would not these are not reasonable at all in my opinion. And it's interesting to me that there's no ramps or anything like that. It's fine, but I'm guessing that that's something that will come into mod that we can lower the curbs a bit, maybe add ramps. And I'm certainly gonna be looking for something like that. Here we get to look at a specific person and uh, we're looking at someone that is sick but happy, which is kind of interesting. Uh, but it's a senior citizen. It's a really nice menu. Very easy to see what's going on. We get this little ambulance icon here. I am going to be very curious if we're able to disable those. That was something that in City Skylines could get a little bit overwhelming. So we'll have to keep an eye out for that. Now we get to take a look at specific individuals. And this is Edna Murray, who is homeless and trying to leave the city. Now, I thought I read that if you were homeless, it was because you couldn't afford to leave the city. So I'm very curious to know why this is the status or if this is what they would prefer to be doing, but they can't do it. But look at that, she's going to the seaway. Interesting, so she is walking to leave on a boat. So she has the money for that, interesting. Then we get the shot of some people just lounging on the grass. This grass looks really good. Truthfully, this whole shot looks really good. It's so seamless between the grass, the sidewalk, kind of the little stoop here that we have. It just all looks really, really good. Now we're getting a look at the overall city happiness. And I just want to point out how much more useful this menu is than the menu that was in City Skylines, which had just the general percentage for happiness for each of the zoning categories. 
without really telling you why. You'd have to click on individual buildings and they would be red or green and you could figure out why they were unhappy or happy, but you couldn't really figure it out in this level of granularity. That said, the reasons for happiness are quite interesting. The number one reason people in New Dollarton are happy is that they're wealthy. So that is, you know, that is a thing. People can be happy if they're financially secure. But then the number two reason is they have reliable mail service, which, you know, I, I guess I do have Amazon same day delivery and I do like it if I am in a pinch and need something. But it's just funny to me that that is like the number two reason. Fair tax is number three. And then it's abundance of entertainment, spacious homes, leisure time. And I'm, I'm really curious about how that is going to factor in. Is that just that they have so much money that they can work less hours? I'm guessing that that's how that would be, but that would be almost kind of a tangentially related thing to wealth. So, I mean, spacious homes, presumably because they are wealthy, they would want larger homes. So these are all tied together. And then some of the things that aren't so great are not factoring quite so highly into their happiness. Good education, which is something that like people actually really care about. They'll choose their home based on that. And noise pollution, which again, like that's another thing that you can't really fix on your own. So you figure that would make people unhappy. Reliable healthcare, again, that's something that people care about. And then internet, totally separate from mail. And apparently it's not bringing quite as much happiness. It's <laughs> kind of funny. And just looking at the map a little bit kind of gives some clues. So maybe, oh, I'll, you know, just thinking about it, we can directly control the amount of leisure time because people have to be able to walk to it. So because there are parks all over the place, you don't have to walk far. So that would mean that you could spend more time. There. That is a really nice detail. That is cool. Then we have this gentleman right here who is moving into the city. Interestingly, when you hover over, <laughs> the texture disappears and the head is gone. This person is moving in and they're unemployed. So I wonder what attracted this person to the city. That's something I'll be very interested in seeing. Is that part of the path that people move in because they landed a job? We do have these new diaries where we can see all of their life path. And I'm very curious as to whether when someone moves into your city, if it will explain why they moved into your city. And then we have Larry Doe right here who apparently is a teen, although I would have never guessed it, They're wearing a sport coat and a dress shirt. So I would have guessed that this is an adult. I am very curious uh, if this means that we're just not completely done with the age coding at all. And maybe it's just randomly spawning people at random ages. Not 100% sure about that. But again, you get to see that this person is happy. They're teen. They are educated right now anyway. They are in a wealthy household. So a wealth of information about this. If you go forward a little bit, you can learn about the Doe family generally. So that's Larry Doe's entire family family you can see that the reason why they're happy is they've got a big house and again reliable mail it's just re really really important to everyone in this city apparently also fair taxes I, you know i would guess that that would rate pretty highly bad health coverage apparently it just it's a wash at least they've got their quality mail coverage <laughs> and uh, they've got lots of entertainment and leisure time and then here we're about to see a park get plopped on some pretty steep slopes and what you can tell is it does not handle it very good. It, I mean, it does a couple of things. It levels it out here, but it's pretty rough. I am hoping that this is something that gets resolved. That said, it is another reason why you respect the topography. And if you are going to place it here, why you should probably pre-grade it first. Now we're heading through a single family neighborhood and just look at the level of detail that we have here. We've got this really high level of detail on the garbage truck. We've got a mailbox here that has mail inside of it. The housing models are just great. This looks like a nice little craftsman house. This is kind of a, a modernist prairie style. Really, really love that. Now we have this overview shot of what I assume is the exact same neighborhood we were just looking at. In fact, I think we were just driving down right here behind the garbage truck. And this is that house I was just remarking about. A couple of things I'm noticing here, there's a lot of repetition. So this house is the same as this one. They're just a different color. That's not a huge deal. I mean, when neighborhoods are developed, oftentimes there'll be a dozen floor plans, maybe a two dozen with different variations that make them look just a little bit different. Different elevations is what they're called. So I'm not surprised that there's a lot of repetition. And I'm guessing that'll be resolved once we get new themes. The one thing I am curious about is it seems like we've got some of the same buildings that have variations that are different than just color. So right here, we've got solar panels and an antenna. I am very curious to know if all of these buildings right here have pools. That could be the leveling mechanism. And that is very, very interesting uh, to see that level of variation because that's not a level that you had in the original. In fact, 
you can see it here this yellow building is actually the same as this one in reverse this one has a carport and an antenna this one does not have the carport or the antenna so very interesting to see that hot tub there what if it's back here probably not we'll have to, we'll have to wait and see now we're driving through the city at night and there's an ambulance and I just want to point out one thing. Two guys in fedoras walking together. Everyone knows that there's only one guy in the crew that can wear a fedora. These guys should know and I fully hope that that is coded out when the game comes out. <laughs> now we get a look at Corrine Higgins who is a senior that is retired and is wearing Beats by Dre. So uh, I'm guessing that the models are kind of just shuffling through right now and maybe not assigned to a specific age level. I've Otherwise, I wouldn't expect her to be wearing Beats by Dre, but yeah, I guess you never know. Different strokes for different folks. And then interestingly, they cycle through the menu and we get to see the other person who lives in her household. It's Timothy Higgins. Timothy is an adult. Now that's just interesting because they, they talked about the multi-generational households in the Dev Diary, and this is an example of that. And I mentioned earlier that I hope that we have some diversity of pooches and look right here. We got two different kinds of dogs, two different breeds. So love to see that. I hope that there's a call out to what we're seeing though someday in the game. Neither of these pooches have a leash. So I'd love to see an on leash policy or something like that. Just as a call out to this, because I think it's really funny to see all these dogs patiently walking by themselves without a leash. The most well-behaved dogs in the world in City Skylines 2. Now here we see that if you click on this icon, you get to take a look at your followed citizens. So you could follow these people for their entire life, see where they are, catch up with them, look at their life path. The one thing I am very curious about is the names. So in different places, there are different ethnicities of people, different names would be more common. And I'm very curious to see if that's going to be a thing. For instance, in Wisconsin, you'll see a lot of German and Polish last names. Obviously that's not all that you see, but that is what is very common near me. So I'm curious to know, knowing that we have different themes for different places, if that will be a thing, if the citizen names will reflect the different places, that is, well, that'd be a really nice touch. Not something that's necessary, but it would be very cool to see. And now we get to learn more about Nova. Nova is educated. She works at Scandic Baron. She work, lives on Belmont Street. She is wealthy and happy and moved in with Karen, apparently. Also, 1.6 thousand likes for <laughs> that? There's only uh, 97,000 people that live in the city. So I guess everyone is really into this because that was something that was kind of mentioned in the Dev Diary is that the number of likes will show how important this is to the citizens of your city. So apparently people are very interested in what Nova's up to. <laughs> in the previous screen, we got to see Chirper within the life path menu. And now we get to take a look at Chirper itself right here. And we get to see a couple of things that are really interesting to me. Greg Evans is saying that there are way too many open jobs and so few workers, less than a thousand people like that. Reasonably, I would normally be very impressed with the number of the level of engagement on this but apparently in city skylines 2 this is weak not safe 3.5 thousand likes we could really use some more residential buildings right now 13,000 people like this in a city of 96,000. so i'm guessing that these will be revised down that is really kind of an outlandish level of engagement but very very interesting we can definitely see the priorities of the people here and it's really we need more residential now here we can see that you can actually engage with chirper and like things i'm wondering what that does i just i don't feel like that would be there unless it meant something so if you like it do you get a log of the chirps that you liked because you want to be able to reference it back later or is it just a way to make it feel like a real social network but again we're seeing those crazy engagement numbers 4,000 here 7.7 thousand from the electricity department i can tell you i posted things to a municipal social media you don't get that many likes <laughs> no matter how big your city is you don't get that many likes it has to be something really cute and with this shot i know we're supposed to be looking at chirper but just look at this stadium looks really really good multi-use stadium we got track and field we've got football we've got soccer it just does a little bit of everything here and it's not overdone just really a great looking asset but again the main attraction is chirper and now we're seeing that there is smog and then we have this other just general info like i love the weather which is fine but this is again kind of one of the reasons why i will probably leave this closed most of the time because it's a lot of noise that's going on in the background 
But when you need to diagnose problems with your city, maybe why it's not growing, Chirper's there, which I think makes it more useful than in the past. I haven't, I can't, I can't really recall the last time I opened up Chirper. I'm hoping that in City Skylines 2, I will use it a bit more. And here we are with our final shot, and we have people walking down this pedestrian promenade, which I think is supposed to act as kind of a key as well, although it doesn't really look great right here. But uh, again, there's someone that's just stopped right here, and I'm very curious, is this a choice where she has decided to stop and take in the view here, or is this her being frozen? I'm very curious to know about that, but I really hope that she's not frozen, that this is something that the Sims can make a choice about, which is kind of what is this is supposed to all be about. All of the Sims have choices now. They'll all make decisions. They're all going to be different. And I really like the way that they've taken this. It's a really interesting direction. And now for my final thoughts. Overall, I think the changes to Citizen Simulation are interesting and overall net positives for the game. And it should lead to more interesting gameplay. Status conditions and individual citizen happiness were the kinds of things that were hinted at in City Skylines, but not directly implemented, at least not in a visible way. I'm a bit neutral about the life path journal and Chirper. I have a feeling that this will be one of those things that I look at initially, then disable and avoid looking at unless there's a serious problem within the city. That is, unless there's some direct tie into the upcoming life by you. This is something that I'm very curious about. However, it's important to note that while both games are being published by Paradox, they're being developed by different studios. So hoping for direct integration might just be wishful thinking. But what do you think about the new Citizen Simulation and Life Path? Let me know down in the comments. Or if you're bashful, consider dropping your favorite emoji in the comments for the sake of engagement. And consider hitting the like button if you enjoyed the video. Thanks again for joining me on another one of these deep dives. While there are two more dev diaries left, the topics, the game's sound and cinematic camera, are likely best discussed in a live playthrough. As was announced in my community tab, I'll be releasing a few live City Skylines 2 playthroughs starting on September 8th. So subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell if you want to be notified as soon as the content drops. Thanks again for joining me on another one of these deep dives. I'll leave a link to a playlist with all of the deep dives in the pinned comment just in case you missed any. Once again, thanks and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.